Hi, today I want to show you a project from the Langchain team called OpenGPTs. I'm going to show you how to get it running and we also take a look at the architecture of it since many of you requested a video about a full stack project with fast API and React. So here it is. OpenGPTs makes use of other projects of Langchain, so Langchain itself, Langsurf and Langsmith. So let's start by cloning the repository and open it in VS Code. In the repository itself you also find an instruction of how to set up the project but actually this is not the best way to set up the project. I prefer to set up the project itself with Docker Compose so you don't have to install any dependencies on your computer manually. So you can just use everything with Docker. So to use the setup you of course have to make sure that you've installed Docker on your machine. So if we have a look at the Docker Compose YAML we can see that we use two services, Redis, this is our in-memory database, and then we've got our backend. And the backend makes use of the Docker file and uses the current working directory to actually build this. So we can see here we've got a base image, Python 3.11, and then we copy everything from the backend directory inside the current working directory. Then we run pip install, and then very important at the end, we use the dist folder from the front end directory and copy that inside the UI directory of that new uh, service. At the end, we have our starting command and we make use of Ubicorn and start our web server then. So what is inside that dist folder? Modern JavaScript frameworks make use of a so-called build command to create minified JS files and a single index.html to create a really small bundle of files for an otherwise quite complex web application. So if you have a look at the front-end folder, we can see there is no dist folder yet. And that's because we have to run that build command on our own. If you have a look at the package.json file, we can see here are some scripts and here is the build script. So we use read under the hood to create our final um, this folder. So to make this project running you have to have installed node.js on your computer and if that's the case you can check with node minus minus version. I've got node version 18 so check if that command is running and if that's the case you can install weed with npm install weed. There you install the weed um, package that will take some time. Okay, after installing Veed, we also have to install yarn because as you can see here, here is a yarn.log file. So just running that with npm will not work. So we have to install that with npm, install and then yarn. And after installing yarn, we have to cd in the front end folder. And now we have to run yarn build. So this will now trigger the build command here which will then compile everything from TypeScript to JavaScript and run the build command. So at the end, we can see that now we've got our dist folder. This is the folder we need to create our Docker image. So one last step. So first let's close the front end folder. And this is, we have to set up our OpenAI API key. As you can see, here is a placeholder. And there's also the Entropic API key, which has also a placeholder. So we don't need that API key, but we need two additional keys. So this is a little misleading. So that's my OpenAI API key. And you will need two additional keys, the YDC API key and the Tavily API key. So you don't actually have to own that key. So I will just replace that with a placeholder. But there is a Bidenti class that will check for the existence of that keys. So these are optional tools which you can use if you want to, but you don't have to, but you have to provide some placeholders. Okay, now let's cd into the root folder and run docker compose up minus minus build. So this will now download the relevant images and build our custom image here with the provided docker file. So this may take some time now. Ah, as you can see, we get an error here and this is because it didn't save the environment file but we also already built the uh, containers. So we can just run docker compose up and now it should not lead to an error. Yeah, as you can see, now this works and we can visit our localhost on the browser. So this is just running on localhost and the port for that service is here, port 8100. So we have to go to localhost and 8100. So this is how our UI looks like. 
So we first have to create a new bot. And what we can do here is we can set an agent type. So we can set the a model version. For example, we can set GPT 3.5 Turbo, but we can also set Claude 2. This is a model from Amazon, but because we don't have any API keys for that, we have to stick with GPT. And here we can set a system message. You can see we can set it, you are a pirate speaking bot or something like that. So we can see that it behaves different from normal. And here we can also upload a file. So we can actually make use of some kind of vector database under the hood. So we can just provide a very simple file here. So here's a very simple text file. As you can see here is a QA format for a fictional hotel. So let's maybe just use that and upload that. And then we can also create a public link because this local host this does not make any sense. And we can also provide a name for the bot. So we can make uh, the hotel pirate bot. So let it set like this. Click on save. And now this takes a few seconds. And here we can see that we've got multiple bots now. So we can always create new bots, which um, can behave differently. And then we can pick a bot and create a new chat. So let's first just try to chat. So how much does the budget friendly suite cost? So I would expect the correct answer also in that pirate language. Okay, we get back the correct answer. And as you can see, we also see what was actually used. So we can see there was a retriever used. And this is how our document looks like under the hood. So yeah, there was some kind of uh, chunking and pre-processing done with the text file I provided. But yeah, that works fine. And we don't have to do anything on our own. Okay, great, that works fine. And now let's have a look at the code at how this is actually done under the hood. Okay, here we can see that we've got multiple logs which come from UV icon. This is the web server that runs our fast API application. Here we can see we've got multiple logs at log level info. Now let's have a look at the backend folder. So let's go to backend and then to app. And the most important file here is the server.py. So this is where the fast API application is created. So we create an instance of fast API and provide an ingest endpoint. So this is where we upload our files. This is done in this post endpoint. We also add an API router and this API router is imported here from the API folder and inside the init.py, we can see that we add the assistance router. So this is handled, everything is handled here. So we create multiple classes and multiple endpoints inside that folder. So we've got another file called runs.py where we also got some endpoints and a lot of base models and also the threads.py. But this does not matter too much. Here, everything is combined to a single API. And then what's also very important is this part. So this is where we add our UI. So fast API allows not to only be a REST API, but also allows serving static files like an HTML or JavaScript files. And this can be done by providing a directory and the directory is created here. So we move up one directory and another directory, and then we are in our root directory and go one directory deep. And this is the UI directory. So this, not, this does not exist here, but it makes sense when, when we have a look at the Docker file. So we can see we um, copy that dist folder to the UI folder. So in combination with that, with that, that now makes sense. So we provide everything inside that UI folder and mount it as sub uh, application to our main application. And then we just run the server. So this is how everything is combined together. So that's it. The project is still quite new, but in my opinion, it looks quite promising. If you've got questions, let me know it in the comments. See you. Bye bye.